हेलो ऑल वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी यूपीएससी आर्टिकुलेट प्रोग्राम होप आई एम ऑडिबल टू ऑल ऑफ यू यस सो गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल ऑफ यू वेलकम टू अन अकेडमी यूपीएससी आर्टिकुलेट प्रोग्राम आई एम शिल्पा नागराजु I'll be taking you through current affairs in news from PIB, Yojana, and Kurukshetra through MCQ in this next one hour. My classes will be regularly held from Monday to Friday on YouTube from three to four for this current affairs session. And on an academy, you can follow me. Uh, you're typing my name that is Shilpa Nagaraju, and there I keep taking current affairs revision through MCQs on international relations from four five to five five. and 6 to 8 we have the prelims mock session from monday to friday so before we start the session let's see what's happening at an academy and also please like and share the video and press the bell button for further notifications and subscriptions we are celebrating 75 years of independence series sorry one second at an academy and let's celebrate it commemorate it cherish it and crack it we have 12 iconic speakers and educators at an, at an academy from 9 am to 8 pm on august 15 it's a back to back part packed sessions with 12 iconic speakers and educators there will be 12 talks and discussions so register now use my code shilpain10 for registration there will be back to back power pack sessions on 15th august 2021 we have sessions on raja ram mohan roy dada bhai navroji bal gangadhar tilak rabindranath tagore mohan das karamchand gandhi abul kalam azad jawahar lal nehru sardar vallabhai patel dr bhim rao ambedkar bhagat singh aur chandrashekar azad subhash chandra bose and women in national movement so please do attend this sessions this Power pack sessions because all of these people have contributed to India's freedom struggle, and we should know about them, feel proud about them, and also it's important for your UPSC exams. So I dream to make my country proud by becoming an IAS is happening here at an academy. This offer ends on 18th of August. Here you will get extension till mains. flat discounts plus free optional test series on the combo cc assure program only on plus subscription an academy knows notes come free here test series worth rupees 30000 comes free optional carnival with 16 optional subjects comes free here so freedom offer on plus upsc combo one subscription to crack it all program where you have flat off on one year plus combo two year plus combo three year plus combo also you get free optional test series plus prelims and mains test series here so this offer ends on 18th august subscribe now use my code shilpain10 optional carnival is happening on 11th august and 18th august for top 16 optionals Ultimate Test Series Combo is available only on GS Combo and Iconic Combo subscriptions. Optional Test Series, Prelims plus Main Test Series, with 21 tests for each optional course. 80 tests every year, and it is worth rupees 45,000. It comes free with one year and above combo subscription. This offer ends on 18th of August. It is analyzed by top educators, curated as per the changing UPSC pattern. Compete with the in with the best in India. Comprehensive model answers will be provided. Hundred one plus tests in a year as per the UPSC standards. One subscription to Crack It All program. This is limited period offer. Join now because two point three lakh ka package, which is worth of batches, mains test series, prelims test series, books, optional batches with test series, all worth two point three. 3 lakh is now available at 57500 only this is a jo this is a very limited period of uh, and price hike is coming soon so subscribe now use my code shilpain10 mentorship days is happening here and the offer ends on 18th of august 
you just have to pay 2000 and get optional worth rupees 27500 free here you get a personal coach to handle you in your upsc journey comprehensive coverage till mains prelims mains and optional test series worth rupees 45000 comes free optional worth 27500 will be available only for rupees 2000 here comprehensive coverage till mains you need not have to worry when the exam will be happening there is extended subscription of one year plan valid till mains 2022 two year plan valid till mains 2023 use my code shilpayan 10 and go for it cac assure program is applicable on two year subscriptions onward where you clear take the two year subscription clear upsc you're not satisfied with your ranking then an academy will give you one year extension and you can crack with us with our support with the rank you want this offer is ending on 18th August, so please subscribe before it goes. Chase your UPSC dream by availing loan for UPSC preparation on Academy at zero processing fee, 0% interest rate, approval in two hours, no hidden charges, minimal paperwork and flexible tenures. Ultimate CAC, ultimate offer may aapko milta hai 20 books created by best UPSC experts worth rupees 10,000 comes free with one year subscription and onwards. 100% syllabus completion, highly structured for ease of learning. Created by best UPSC experts. Previous year questions are included here and it is updated with current affairs. UPSC combat happens every Sunday at 11 a.m. Please don't miss this Sunday. Use my code, invite code Shilpa and 10 and go for the subscription and the combat. Uh, an academy in Tamil, you can aim for your success in UPSC. CSC with an academy Tamil where the summit is curated and led by experts. August 15th mein ho raha hai, ye 10 AMA. Hello Abhishek. So use my code Shilpayan 10 and attend this. New batches for UPSC CSC 21, 22, 23 aspirants are starting from 18th August. Prelims code booster MCQ batches are also starting. Tamil batches for the first time ever is happening at an academy from 18th of August. One year batches for UPSC CSC, two year batches for UPSC CSC and you have Iconic Plus program where you get personal guidance, study planner, study material, experts guidelines and test analysis with live classes, weekly tests, structured courses and unlimited access. So two types of subscription as you all know, Plus subscription and Iconic subscription. Go for the one which is suitable for you and this is my schedule at an academy. Monday to Friday we have YouTube session on PIB, Yojana and Kurukshetra from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Rapid fire session on international relations from 4 5 to 5 5 pm and prelims mock from 6 to 8 pm. Use my code Shilpayan10 for any subscription. So, this session is PIB uh, plus Yojana plus Kurukshetra in news. So, let's crack it with an academy. First question is coming up. Two minutes time to all of you. Come on, all of you. I expect all of you to answer. Two minutes time. It's 3, 8, 3, 10 ko. May answer bolungi. Last one minute. You can just check like Shilpa and Academy. You will get it.
यस रिकॉर्डेड ही बोल रही हूँ यू कैन जस्ट चेक आउट नो ओके यू जस्ट टाइप शिल्पा एन अकेडमी यू विल गेट इन द यूट्यूब दैट्स फाइन यू कैन हैव द रिकॉर्डेड वीडियोज देर सो दिस इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू वर्चुअल कोर्ट एंड देव आज फॉर करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट हियर वर्चुअल कोर्ट इज एन इनिशिएटिव ऑफ ई कमिटी ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट अलॉन्ग विथ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जस्टिस Ministry of Law and Justice, Government of India. It's an initiative of E Committee of Supreme Court, along with Department of Justice, which is under the Ministry of Law and Justice, which is under the Government of India. So, ये Supreme Court alone का initiative नहीं है, but ये Ministry of Law and Justice का department का भी contribution है. तो ये सही उत्तर है. Virtual court is an online court being managed by Supreme Court judge. ये wrong है. Okay, so two second statement is wrong. You can eliminate these three, and you can come to the answer. C is the correct answer. Who have given? Ankit Anand, Mohammad Khali Dasan Khan, Utsav Tejeshri have answered right. C is the correct answer. One and three. In a trial by virtual court, neither the litigant shall come to the court nor will. Judge have to sit physically in the court to adjudicate the case. So it is one and three only. What is virtual court? It's an initiative of E Committee of Supreme Court. I already told you, along with Department of Justice under Ministry of Law and Justice by the Government of India. Now, how is it managed? We got to know whose initiative is this virtual court. Now, who is managing this? It is managed by a virtual judge. it's it's a virtual judge not a supreme court judge it is not a person but it's algorithm it's a virtual judge it is not managed by a person but by an algorithm whose jurisdiction can be extended to entire state working hours is 27 24 by 7 so ye virtual court mein ek virtual judge hote hai ye person nahi honge ye algorithm hai इनके जुरिस्टिक्शन होता है पूरे स्टेट में एंड वर्किंग आवर्स होता है 24 बाय 7. देर इज नो ब्रिक एंड मोर्टर बिल्डिंग ऑफ द कोर्ट इन इन अ ट्रायल बाय वर्चुअल कोर्ट नीदर द लिटिगेंट शैल कम टू द कोर्ट नॉट विल द जज हैव टू सेट फिजिकली इन द कोर्ट टू एडजुडिकेट द केस द कम्युनिकेशन मे ओनली बी इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फॉर्म एंड द सेंटेंसिंग एंड फर्दर पेमेंट ऑफ फाइन और कॉम्पनसेशन विल ऑल्सो बी ऑनलाइन only single process is allowed and there can be no argument here it may be pro proactive admission of guilt by the accused or proactive compliance of the cause by defendant on receipt of the summons in electronic form on payment of fine such matters may be treated as disposed of citizen neither have to wait in lines in court nor have to confront traffic police man all i think uh, it's very clear it's a virtual trial by this एल्गोरिदम जुरिस्टिक्शन होता है पूरे स्टेट में और ये ये वर्क वर्किंग आवर्स होता है ट्वेंटी फोर बार सेवन आपको उधर जाना भी नहीं है और जज भी फिजिकली उधर नहीं बैठते हैं कम्युनिकेशन इज जस्ट इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फॉर्म एंड सेंटेंसिंग और फर्दर पेमेंट ऑफ फाइन कॉम्पेंसेशन ऑल इज ऑनलाइन वर्चुअल हो जाता है इसलिए नाम है वर्चुअल कोर्ट सिंगल प्रोसेस एंड नो आर्ग्यूमेंट इज देयर क्योंकि ये वर्चुअल जज है एल्गोरिदम से काम होता है तो इसलिए इधर सिंगल प्रोसेस होता है एंड देर इज नो आर्ग्यूमेंट एट ऑल ठीक है इट इज वेरी प्रोएक्टिव एडमिशन ऑफ गिल्ट बाय द अक्यूज और प्रोएक्टिव कंप्लेन्स ऑफ द कॉज बाय डिफेंडेंट ऑन रिसेप्ट ऑफ द समन्स इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक फॉर्म लाइक ऑन पेमेंट ऑफ फाइन सच मैटर्स विल बी ट्रीटेड एज डिस्पोज ऑफ आप एक्सेप्ट किए हैं पेमेंट ऑफ फाइन को पे किए हैं तो आपका केस डिस्पोज दैट्स ऑल दिस इज अबाउट the virtual court it is by supreme court along with department of justice ministry of law and justice government of india theek hai clear next
Come on, answer all of you. Two minutes time. That's all. I expect all of you to answer. Good, Prabhu. Next. आप लोग थोड़ा दिमाग लगाना चाहिए सब गलत है वन मोर मिनट लेफ्ट गुड अंकित गुड तेजेश्री प्रभु थोड़ा दिमाग लगाइए ओके टाइम आप विल गेट बैक टू द क्वेश्चन दिस इज विद रेस्पेक्ट टू ब्लूमबर्ग यार ये तो नहीं दिखता है ओके नाउ दिख गया तो दिस इज विद रेस्पेक्ट टू ब्लूमबर्ग न्यू एकोनॉमी फोरम The Bloomberg Bloomberg New Economic Forum was established in 2018 by Mr. Michael Bloomberg. ये सही statement है क्योंकि 2018 में ये Michael Bloomberg ने इस इस forum को establish किए थे. तो ये सही है. तो आप eliminate कर सकते हैं. Sorry, they have asked for correct statement. So you can you can eliminate these three and the correct answer. Oh, sorry, sorry, very, very sorry, very sorry, very sorry. Eraser, le, le, lethi hu. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Isko bhi eliminate karenge. Isko bhi eliminate karenge. Or eraser bola ke hiye. Aay. Thik hai. So, ye sahi hai. To aap eliminate kar sakte hai. B ko. It seeks to build. A community of leaders to engage in real conversations, leading to actionable solutions about the critical challenges facing a world economy in the throes of a historic transition. Yes, the inaugural forum was held in Singapore, and the second annual forum was hosted in Beijing. So, one, two, three are correct. The correct answer is D. Kon kon diye hai correct answer? Ankit Anand, Teja Shri, Vavare, and that's all. I told you people that please check once. आप नहीं देखे प्रभु आनंद श्रीनिवास मोहम्मद खालिद सब रॉन्ग किए है ये डी है करेक्ट आंसर एक्चुअली इट वॉज अ न्यूज बिकॉज हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी ने इनको एड्रेस किए थे थर्ड एनुअल ब्लूमबर्ग न्यू इकोनॉमिक फोरम हुआ था 2020 में इनको एड्रेस किए थे हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी इसके लिए ये न्यूज में था ये एस्टेब्लिश हुए थे 2018 में एंड हु एस्टेब्लिश दिस इट वाज मिस्टर माइकल ब्लूमबर्ग ये क्या करना चाहते हैं इट वांट्स टू बिल्ड अ कम्युनिटी ऑफ लीडर्स दोज हु वांट टू एंगेज इन रियल कॉन्वर्जेशन लीडिंग टू एक्शनेबल सोल्यूशन अबाउट द क्रिटिकल चैलेंजेस फेसिंग अ वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी इन द थ्रोज ऑफ अ हिस्टोरिक ट्रांसिशन द इनग्रल फोरम वॉज हेल्ड इन सिंगापोर एंड द सेकेंड एनुअल फोरम वॉज होस्टेड इन बीजिंग पहले हुआ था इनोग्रल फोरम सिंगापुर में अभी सेकेंड एनुअल फोरम हुआ था बीजिंग में दिस कवर्ड अरेंज ऑफ टॉपिक्स इनमें कौन कौन सी विषय प्रस्ताव किए थे ग्लोबल इकोनॉमिक मैनेजमेंट ट्रेड एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट टेक्नोलॉजी अर्बनाइजेशन कैपिटल मार्केट क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड इंक्लूजन दिस इयर एज द वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमी इज ग्रैपलिंग विद कोविड नाइनटीन पैंडमिक The forum will witness discussion centered on refueling the economy and charting a course for the future. So please remember about this Bloomberg New Economy Forum. ये क्या करते हैं किधर किधर होस्ट हुए थे एंड कौन कौन इनको एस्टेब्लिश किए थे करके ठीक है नेक्स्ट
come on last two uh, two minutes last minute only two of you have answered right idhar to tick dikh raha hai last minute last few seconds yes over so this is with respect to reinvest 2020 and they have asked for correct statement here now the theme for reinvest 2020 is innovations for solar energy transition ye solar energy transition nahi hai ye sustained energy transition hai to ye hota hai galat statement and it aim to accelerate the worldwide effort to scale up development and deployment of renewable energy and connect the global investment community with indian energy stakeholders ye correct hai it aim to build upon the success of the first two editions held in 2015 and 18 and provide an international forum for investment promotion in renewable energy the two and three are correct answers first one is wrong to b is the correct answer ओ सॉरी ये गलत स्लाइड हो गया है तो री इन्वेस्ट ट्वेंटी थीम वॉज इनोवेशन फॉर सस्टेनेबल एनर्जी ट्रांसिशन तो करेक्ट उत्तर है बी कौन दिए है बी कोई नहीं दिए है ये रॉन्ग है ऑल ऑफ यू आर गॉट रॉन्ग एनी डाउट यू क्या हुआ अंकित कुछ डाउट से इधर ठीक है विल गो टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्विक रिएक्शन सर्फिस टू एयर मिसाइल क्यू आर सैम Come on, answer all of you. Okay. last minute quick reaction surface to air missile q r sam and there was for correct statement okay so the correct answer is c 1 and 3 only it's a missile developed by the defense research and development organization 
in association with Bharat Electronics Limited and Bharat Dynamics Limited for Indian Army. This missile is an all-weather, all-terrain, surface-to-surface missile equipped with electronic uh, countermeasures against jamming by aircraft radars. This is wrong because this is surface-to-surface missile, nahi hai, but it is a surface-to-air missile. The missile can be mounted on a track and is stored in a canister. This is right. 1 and 3. C is the correct answer. Sir, Frankie diye hai. Correct answer. It's not a surface to surface. It is surface to air missile. A quick reaction. Surface to air. ER only it is there na. Ye surface to air missile hai. It is a missile developed by Defense Research and Development Organization, simply DRDO, in association with Bharat Electronics Limited and Bharat Dynamics Limited for Indian Army. So DRDO, BEL, Bharat, BDL, teen samstaye in me involved hue hai, and they have developed this for Indian Army. Ye all weather missile hai, all terrain missile hai, surface se air. Jata hai ye missile, it is equipped with electronic countermeasures against jamming by aircraft radars. The missile can be mounted on a truck and is stored in a canister. QR SAM uses solid fuel propellant. Ye liquid propellant ko nahi use karta hai fuel jese. Ye solid fuel propellant ko use karte hai. It has a range of 25 to 30 km. It is single staged missile. It is solid fuel propellant and single staged missile. It utilizes uh, the, uh, the single staged missile and is propelled against the using the solid propellants. It is equipped with a mid-course internal inertial navigation system with a two-way data link and a DRDO developed terminal active seeker. The system has the capability to search and track targets while moving. QRSAM is a compact weapon system and it is mobile. It is fully automated command and control system. The pura automation hai ye and teen organization hai Bagidar is me DRDO wo defense research and development organization hai and association hai Bharat Electronics Limited BEL and Bharat Dynamics Limited BDL ko aur inhone banaye hue hai Indian Army ko please remember it's an all weather missile all terrain missile surface to air missile okay so good see sir Frankie ne diye hai very good Frankie keep up Next, Come on, two minutes. Last few seconds, please answer. Only few of you are active. Others should also be active, na? Attempt karne ke liye kuch nahi jata hai. So this is with respect to supercomputer. 
and they've asked for correct statement a supercomputer is a computer with a high level of performance is supercomputer ka ban ka bolte hai hamare computer ko bhi supercomputer bol sakte hai na agar inka definition nahi hota hai to ye supercomputer bolte hai kyunki inka level of performance bahut high hote hai and uh, like when like If you say like uh, high level of performance होता है तो ये compare करते हैं हमारे general purpose computer को तो हमारे general purpose computer और super computer में ये फर्क है क्योंकि ये super computers बहुत high high level में performance करते हैं और ये general purpose computer बहुत average करते हैं comparatively India currently ये सही है first statement is correct and you can eliminate option B India currently dominates the list with 212 supercomputers. No, leading the second place United States by record margin of 113. ये सही नहीं है क्योंकि India नहीं है dominating list में. Uh, it is wrong क्योंकि ये China है. China dominates now. China dominate कर रहा है इधर with a list of 212. 12 super computers and uh, second place hai united states with 113 to ye wrong hai ab eliminate kar sakte ho to correct answer aata hai 1 and 3 since june 2020 japanese fugaku is was most powerful super computer it initially reached 415.53 petaflops and 442.01 petaflops after after an up, update in november 2020 on the linpack benchmarks so ye hai japanese fugaku ye world ka most powerful supercomputer hai so it is one and three only so now c is the correct answer kon kon diye hai bhai idhar साधना दहिया अंकित प्रभु मनोज श्रीनिवास अरे वाह सब कुछ दिए है परम शिवा ऑफ इंडिया इंडिया हैज इंडिया हैज सुपर कंप्यूटर्स मुजाफर करेक्ट सही जवाब है इंडिया के पास सुपर कंप्यूटर्स है साधना पर इतना नहीं है कि टू हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व हो तो सुपर कंप्यूटर क्या है ए कंप्यूटर होता है विद हाई लेवल ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस एज कंपेयर टू जनरल पर्पस कंप्यूटर द परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ अ सुपर कंप्यूटर इज कॉमनली मेजर्ड इन फ्लोटिंग पॉइंट ऑपरेशंस पर सेकंड दैट इज सिंपली कॉल्ड फ्लॉप्स इंस्टेड ऑफ मिलियन इंस्ट्रक्शंस पर सेकंड और एमआईपीएस इन 2000 सिंस 2017 देयर आर सुपर कंप्यूटर्स व्हिच कैन परफॉर्म ओवर 1017 फ्लॉप्स 100 पेटाफ्लॉप्स और 100 पेटाफ्लॉप्स So since November 2017, all the world's fastest 500 supercomputers run Linux-based operating systems, not Windows. The top 500 list, the top 500 project ranks and details the 500 most powerful non-distributed computers in the in the world. Since 2020, Japanese Fugaku is the world's most powerful supercomputer. It has reached 415. परम सिद्धि एंड मिहिर ये है तो आफ्टर एन अपडेट इन नवंबर ऑन लिंपैक बेंच मार्क्स चाइना इज करेंटली डोमिनेटिंग द लिस्ट विद 212 सुपर कंप्यूटर्स लीडिंग द सेकंड प्लेस बाय यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स बाय अ रिकॉर्ड मार्जिन ऑफ 113 एज ऑफ जून 2020 व्हेन रैंकिंग बाय नंबर ऑफ सुपर कंप्यूटर सिस्टम्स इन द टॉप 500 लिस्ट इंडिया इज रैंक्ड 23rd इन द वर्ल्ड द क्रे एक्स सी40 बेस्ड Pratyush is the fastest computer in in India. Supercomputers play an important role in the field of computational science and are used for a wide range of computationally intensive tasks in various fields including quantum mechanics, weather forecasting, climate research, oil and gas exploration, molecular modeling, computing the structures and properties of chemical compounds, biological macromolecules, polymers and crystals. physical simulations such as simulations of the early moments of the universe airplane spacecraft aerodynamics and detonation of nuclear weapons and nuclear fusion so china hai currently dominating india 23rd position mein hai india ka fastest supercomputer a pratyush and it is based on cray xc40 okay so hope this is clear we'll go to the next question new parliament building
मैं भी नहीं साधना सही जवाब देनी चाहिए कमॉन आंसर लास्ट मिनट ओके सो दिस इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू न्यू पार्लियामेंट बिल्डिंग ओके ओके नो प्रॉब्लम साधना and they have asked for correct statement here and this is about new parliament building it would replace the existing colonial structure which would be which would be completing 100 years in 2021 the existing colonial structure of parliament hai ye 100 years complete karta hai 2021 mein yahi saal mein to ye sahi hai तो आप एलिमिनेट कर सकते हो ऑप्शन बी इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड दैट द स्ट्रक्चर वुड बी कंप्लीटेड बाय 2022 ट्वेंटी हंड्रेड इयर्स ऑफ इंडिया इंडिपेंडेंस ये हंड्रेड इयर्स नहीं है सेवेंटी फाइव है तो रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट तो आप एलिमिनेट कर सकते हैं इनको और इनको और सही जवाब है सी वन एंड थ्री द थीम ऑफ द न्यू बिल्डिंग वुड सेलिब्रेट द कल्चरल डिवर्सिटी ऑफ द कंट्री सो वन एंड थ्री आर करेक्ट कौन कौन दिए है नरेश प्रभु तेजश्री एंड हसन खान तो सी है सही उत्तर थैंक यू साधना फॉर सेइंग माय सेशन इंटरेस्टिंग इट रियली बूस्ट द कॉन्फिडेंस सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैड लेड डाउन द फाउंडेशन स्टोन फॉर द न्यू पार्लियामेंट बिल्डिंग इन इसके लिए इसके वजह से ये न्यूज में था हमारे पीआईबी में योजना में और कुरुक्षेत्र में भी The new building would be a four-story structured. Seating capacity is one thousand two hundred and twenty-four, and it costs rupees nine hundred and seventy crore. ये होगा four-story structured. Seating capacity होगा thousand two hundred and twenty-four. Cost is nine seventy crore. It would replace the existing colonial structure. It would be complete, uh, which would be completing hundred years in twenty twenty-two. It is expected that the structure would be completed by 2022, coinciding with 75 years of India's independence, not 100 years. अब सब लोगों ने गलती किए हैं इधर क्योंकि 2022 में हम सेलिब्रेट करते होंगे 75 years of India's independence and not 100. Theme क्या है? The theme of new building would celebrate the cultural diversity of the country. It would also incorporate regional arts and crafts here. artisans sculptures from across the country would be employed the complete new structure making it a symbol of atmanirbhar bharat kyunki hamare sculptures artists sab ko bulaye gaye hai aur cultural diversity of india ko celebrate karna chahte hai ye new parliament building mein to ye symbol banega atmanirbhar bharat ka kuch nahi hai ye self reliant india ka ek symbol ban jayega ye parliament building the building will not have the iconic central hall present in the existing structure the new building will also have a grand constitution hall to showcase india's democratic heritage the lounge for members of parliament a library multiple committee rooms dining areas and ample parking space the existing parliament house building will be suitably retrofitted to provide more functional spaces for parliamentary events to ensure its usage along with new building existing building is a british era building it was designed by edwin lutyens and herbert baker who were responsible for planning and construction of new delhi the foundation stone of the existing parliament house was laid down in 12th of february 1921 to is saal mein iska 100 years pura hoga and the construction took 6 years and cost was 83 lakh rupees at that time opening ceremony was performed on january 18 1927 by the then governor general of india that is lord ayrvan kuch doubt say the kuch nahi hai the kon kon the governor general jab inauguration hua tha ye lord ayrvan hai 
और कौन डिजाइन किए थे ये बिल्डिंग को एडविन ल्यूटन और हर्बर्ट बेकर ने इन दोनों ने ही प्लानिंग एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ न्यू दिल्ली को भी किए थे लर्न आई पेन गॉट इट एनी डाउट इट विल बी कंप्लीटेड नेक्स्ट ईयर थीम है कल्चरल डिवर्सिटी ऑफ इंडिया को सेलिब्रेट करने के लिए सिंबल ऑफ आत्मनिर्भर भारत प्लीज नोट द बिल्डिंग विल नॉट हैव द आइकॉनिक सेंट्रल हॉल प्रेजेंट इन द एग्जिस्टिंग स्ट्रक्चर चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन जाएंगे हम अपेडा एग्रीकल्चरल एंड प्रोसेस्ड फूड प्रोडक्ट्स एक्सपोर्ट डेवलपमेंट अथॉरिटी Two minutes time to all of you. Please answer. I wish all of you to answer. carefully good ankit good sadhna good prabhu muzaffar thoda think kijiye think kijiyega anup sasindran all of you uh, he is also right last minute all of you please try to answer no good so this is with respect to agricultural and processed food products export development authority or simply called apda they have asked for correct statement here agricultural and processed food products export development authority apda is an apex body under ministry of agriculture ye ministry of agriculture ka nahi hai ye ministry of whom please tell me i will explain you here then you will understand ye ministry of agriculture ka nahi hai तो आप एलिमिनेट कर सकते हैं ये सी एंड डी सो बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर इट इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल प्रोडक्ट्स द अथॉरिटी रिप्लेस्ड प्रोसेस्ड फूड एक्सपोर्ट प्रमोशन काउंसिल सो टू एंड थ्री आर करेक्ट बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर कौन कौन दिए हैं अंकित प्रभु साधना अनूप तेजश्री एफ गिवन करेक्ट आंसर So, considering the potential of increasing the exports of millets and millet products, the focus given by government for the development of millet, millet sector of nutri cereals, APEDA is formulating a strategy with FPOs or the farmer producer organizations for perspective planning of five years for promotion of millets and millets products. It is preparing a perspective action plan for increasing export of millet and millet products for a period of five years, that is 21 to 26, to enable all concerned stakeholders for taking necessary action in a time-bound manner for achieving the target. So, ये news में था अपेडा क्योंकि इन्होंने ये चाहते हैं कि मिलेट्स का एक्सपोर्ट ज्यादा करें और मिलेट प्रोडक्ट्स को भी ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस दें और उनको एक्सपोर्ट करें तो इनका प्लानिंग चल रहा है 21 टू 26 सो दैट सब स्टेक होल्डर्स को इंक्लूड करके उनका टाइम बाउंड मैनर का टारगेट अचीव करें 
further efforts would be made on identification of millet clusters creation of platform to consolidate fa farmers fpos exporters associations other stakeholders and identification of new potential international markets for promotion of indian millets increasing interest in reviving the consumption of millets across various countries is favoring the growth prospects of this product in recent years within the country and for the exports as well so millet is a common term to categorize small seeded grasses that are often termed nutri cereals and include sorghum pearl millet ragi small millet foxtail millet proso millet barnyard millet kodo millet and other millets Mi millets are the cereal crops generally small seeded and known for high nutritive value apeda is an apex ministry apex body under the ministry of commerce and industry kon bole the idhar sadhana tejeshri and prabhu told correct it is by the ministry of commerce and industry government of india responsible for the export promotion of agricultural products the apeda was established by the government of india under the agricultural and processed food products export development authority act passed by the parliament in december 1985 the authority replaced the processed food export promotion council so ye hai about apeda it is by ministry of commerce and industry very good people next question Come on, all of you. last minute last minute to all of you ठीक है, बांग्लादेश का नहीं है ये नेपाल का है हाँ साधना लेट एवरी वन आंसर देन वी कैन रिवील द आंसर बिकॉज एवरी वन शुड अटेंड फॉर टू मिनट्स ना एंड दे शुड ऑल्सो गेस इट्स एम सी क्यू राइट So government of Nepal and government of India के बीच में है ये agreement and it is regarding the development of watershed of Mahakali River क्योंकि दोनों देश में ये बहुत uh, holy river भी मानते हैं तो we share the rivers and boundaries also we have history with Nepal so ये बोल ये agreement है development of this watershed of Mahakali River सही है ये wrong statement है पहले statement है wrong तो आप इजीली एलिमिनेट कर सकते हो और अराइव हो सकते हो सही जवाब में बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर मुजफ्फर साधना 
तेजश्री प्रभु have answered right the treaty has 12 articles 12 articles agreements for an in integrated development of barrage after the answer is uh, done 2 minutes ho jayega to main ye start karungi na to aap de sakte ho explanations okay when i start reading the question then you give the answers okay sadhana and others that would be great so it has 12 articles agreements for an integrated development of barrage barrage dams and hydro power for mutual cooperation of the two countries by managing the water resources the treaty recognizes the mahakali river as a boundary river between the two countries 2 and 3 are correct nhpc lays the foundation stone of head regulator works of indo nepal link canal the indo nepal link canal project comprises of constructing a head regulator on the left bank of existing tanakpur barrage and diverting its water into irrigation canal to nepal the 1.2 km long indo nepal canal is being constructed under mahakali treaty signed between india and nepal the proposed india indo nepal link canal envisages construction of irrigation canal originating from tanakpur barrage and runs on the left bank of the river at almost perpendicular to sharda river it eventually connects nepal canal after closing the indian territory so ye hai mahakali treaty it's an agreement between the government of nepal and government of india mainly for the development of watershed of mahakali river the treaty was signed in 1996 Twelve articles agreements are involved in this, and Mahakali River is a boundary river between India and Nepal. Next question: is, International Association of Insurance Supervisors. Two minutes time. Two minutes time. last minute last few seconds please answer i expect all of you to answer you know keep trying because you will know where you stand and where to improve last few seconds keep trying good okay this is with respect to international association of insurance supervisors and they have asked for correct statement they have asked uh, about the correct statement b is the correct answer 2 and 3 only is correct 
अंकित साधना मुजाफर प्रभु तेजश्री अनूप ससींद्रन वेरी गुड साधना दिस इज द वे एंड दिस इज द वे यू गिव एक्सप्लेनेशन आल्सो करेक्ट वेरी गुड अंकित एंड साधना इट इज एडक्वाटर्ड इन पैरिस ये पैरिस में नहीं है बट इट इज एडक्वाटर्ड इन स्विट्जरलैंड इट्स द इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडर्ड सेटिंग बॉडी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर डेवलपिंग एंड असिस्टिंग इन द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ प्रिंसिपल स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड अदर सपोर्टिंग मटीरियल फॉर द सुपरविजन ऑफ द इंश्योरेंस सेक्टर इट प्रोवाइड्स अ फोरम फॉर मेंबर्स टू शेयर देयर एक्सपीरियंसिस अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इंश्योरेंस सुपरविजन एंड इंश्योरेंस मार्केट्स सो बी इज द करेक्ट आंसर it obtains membership of international association of insurance supervisors that is ifsca it was established in 1994 it is headquartered in switzerland and it is a voluntary membership organization of insurance supervisors regulators from more than 200 jurisdictions constituting 97% of the world's insurance premiums it is the international standard setting body responsible for developing and assisting in the implementation of principles standards and other supporting material for the supervision of the insurance sector it provides a forum for members to share their experiences understanding of insurance supervision and insurance markets it's in recognition of its collective expertise the iais is routinely called upon by the g20 leaders and other international standard setting bodies last question about aerosols one minute for this because we are running out of time so this is about aerosol one minute i give for this one answer all of you at least this question you all answer now okay so time is up that's why i'll say the answer this is with respect to aerosol it's a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air and or another gas yes it can be natural or anthropogenic examples are fog mist dust for such exudates and geyser steam all of them are correct d is the correct answer aerosols in indogangetic plain have led to increased incidence of high rainfall in the himalayan foothills that's why it was a news the indogangetic plains located south and upwind of the himalayan foothills the region is associated with i aerosol loading much of which is black carbon and dust it provides an opportunity for studying how aerosol affects extreme rainfall events particularly when air mass is forced from a low elevation to a higher elevation as it moves over rising terrain technically called orographic forcing it this they showed that particulate emissions can alter the physical and dynamical properties of cloud systems and in turn amplify rainfall events over orographic regions downwind of highly polluted urban areas the team found clear associations between high precipitation events i aerosol loading and i moist static energy values of an air mass includes the potential energy due to its height above the ground and the latent heat due to its moisture content they have found all this this because the aerosol is a suspension of fine solid particles or liquid droplets in air or another gas it can be natural or anthropogenic examples are fog mist dust forest exudates and geyser stream anthropogenic aerosols are particulate or air pollutants and smoke so we saw aerosols we saw iais we saw mahakali treaty and uh, apeda new parliament building supercomputers QR SAM and reinvest 2020 Bloomberg new economy forum and virtual codes so thank you so much we'll catch
on Monday for the YouTube session on PIB Yojana Kurukshetra. Please subscribe and follow my follow me at an academy, and uh, we will catch up for four to five for. Uh, IR related uh, current affairs MCQs 6 to 8 I have my prelims mock session so thank you take care 